The Marvel Universe is a very scary place, and it's so scary that the most intelligent individuals in the Marvel Universe have created their own group that they call the Illuminati to make decisions that affect the entire Marvel Universe. The group was actually created in 2005, but they were retconned into the history of the Marvel Universe and they claim to have been active as far back as 1971 when they first supposedly formed up following the Kree-Skrull War. So we're going to go over how they started and all of the meetings that they had and all of the large story arcs that happened in the Marvel Universe. But the problem is that normally they can't agree on what course of action to take, so they don't actually end up doing anything as a group. But their latest actions and the latest story arc. That is why I bring them up, because when you hear the story later this week, you're going to think that this is the coolest top secret group in the Marvel Universe. Or, you may hate them with a passion. So, following the Kree Skrull War that ravaged the planet Earth, Iron Man called a secret meeting with Mr. Fantastic, Namor, Black Bolt, Professor Xavier, Black Panther, and Doctor Strange. He stated that various superheroes had information about this Kree Skrull War, and that if this information had been shared with the superhero population as a whole, they probably could have prevented mass destruction. With the only real defense that the Earth has to such threats being the superheroes, they need to share this information with the majority of them. So the group as a whole agrees for the need of such a group, all except for Black Panther who foresees problems once the group disagrees on something. The Illuminati was then involved with the battle with the Pride when they locked up the supervillain families, and then supposedly Professor Xavier and Reed Richards tried to prevent the second secret wars from happening by forcing every superhero into an unconscious state. They failed though, and the second secret wars happened, and the rest of the moments that they were retconned into for the second secret wars don't even fully match up with the current continuity. They next show up when Marvel Boy arrives, and they ultimately try to convince him to be a hero for Earth. After also trying to get Sentry onto the Avengers team, they seemingly vanished, and they were replaced by the Council of Kings and the House of M story arc. Once the House of M was ended, and normal reality was brought back to the forefront, the Illuminati started to get rather full of itself, and they decided that they could secretly make larger Earth-shattering decisions. The first of these poor decisions came in the form of how to deal with the Hulk. You see, the Hulk went on a rampage in Las Vegas, prompting Maria Hill to approach Iron Man and think of a more permanent solution for the Hulk. Iron Man takes this problem to the Illuminati, and the decision is to launch the Hulk into space. The plan was to send him to a planet that was full of nothing but plant life, so he couldn't actually kill or harm anybody, and everybody would leave him alone, exactly what the Hulk wanted. But instead, it was knocked off course, sending the Hulk to a planet full of gladiators. There, the Hulk ended up meeting some people and having a family there, but the Illuminati's ship was faulty and exploded, killing the Hulk's wife. Due to this event, the Illuminati decided to disband, but Iron Man called them back for the Superhuman Registration Act. He wanted to get the Illuminati behind the act before they went public with it, so that way the biggest members of the superhero community would be backing this plan. But the group couldn't agree on what to do with this, and they were divided during Civil War. This was supposedly the point where the Illuminati dissolves. As you'll see, they constantly dissolve and reform. So later, before the actual Civil War could begin, Mr. Fantastic decided he would round up all of the Infinity Gems, and he wanted to wish them out of existence using their own power. He called the Illuminati back in to help him get these gems, and they agreed that they would help him actually get all six of the gems. But when Reed tried to wish the gems away, he failed horribly, and he was forced to make a rather unpopular decision. He decided to let each member of the Illuminati take one of the gems for safekeeping. Following this event, the Hulk came back to planet Earth to get revenge against the Illuminati for sending him into space with a faulty ship that was destroyed, killing his wife and unborn son. He went to each member of the Illuminati and eventually captured every single one of them except for Namor. Because Namor is the only one who opposed sending the Hulk into space. He then pitted each of the Illuminati against each other in a gladiator-style ring where they would have killed each other if the Hulk didn't stop them, stating that he had proved his point. The Illuminati walked away thinking of what they had done, and the next time Iron Man called them together was when he found a Skrull posing as Elektra. The Illuminati came together to try and figure out how deep the Skrull had infiltrated the superhero community, but when they discovered that Black Bolt was also actually a Skrull, and the secret invasion story arc had begun, they decided that they couldn't even trust each other, so they disbanded during these events to go and attack the Skrulls with each of their own plans. They would eventually come back together after the secret invasion to prevent the Hood from acquiring the Infinity Gems that they were safeguarding. And once they defeated him, they were once again separated to guard the gems by themselves. But since Black Bolt was seemingly deceased at this time, Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, took the Time Gem. During the Avengers vs. X-Men event, Captain America tried to reassemble the Illuminati to talk to Namor and ask him to stand down when he was possessed by the Phoenix Force. But while Namor did refuse to stand down, stating that he had a higher purpose now, he stated that he still respected Captain America and left, basically confirming what Iron Man thought that the meeting was going to be pointless. 
Now, the story I'm about to go over is the reason I bring up this group, but I'm going to go very sparse on this story because I'm about to make a complete story fully explaining what happened here. The Illuminati was called together once again because the multiverse was collapsing and all of the planets were colliding with each other. They go through many decisions, but it is during this time that the Illuminati finally crosses the line and they start destroying entire planets of individuals. Captain America disagrees with the group and the group fights about it. But this is the story that is currently happening and this is the story that I'm going to be explaining later this week or next week. So let's discuss the members of the Illuminati. The original team consisted of Mr. Fantastic, who was one of the most intelligent individuals in the universe and the leader of Fantastic Four. Doctor Strange, who is Earth's Sorcerer Supreme and the master of all things magic. Namor, who is the King of Atlantis and due to this removes himself from any discussion that doesn't involve Atlantis. Black Bolt, the King of the Inhumans, who lives on the moon until the floating city of Atelian is brought to Earth. Iron Man, another one of the most intelligent people in the universe and also a leading member of the Avengers. And lastly, Professor Xavier, the leader of the X-Men and a spokesperson for all of mutant kind. As the history of Marvel rapidly changes, certain superheroes died and then came back to life once again. Because of this, the Illuminati rotates its roster once in a blue moon. So here's the extra people that have been on the Illuminati for brief periods or longer than brief periods. Medusa, the queen of the Inhumans, took over at first when Black Bolt was presumed dead. Captain America also joined up over the years, though he left the group in the latest iteration and he's also the leader of the Avengers. Black Panther, while he was there at the original meetings, he didn't become a full member right away because he felt that it was going to be a bad idea. He would eventually team up with them though. He is also the king of Wakanda. Beast, aka Hank McCoy, is a member of the X-Men and a leading scientist in all things mutant. Bruce Banner, who's also the Hulk, was another one of the smartest individuals in the Marvel Universe that they needed to bring in eventually. And with the recent events, we've discovered that Captain Britain, Amadeus Cho, and Yellow Jacket are all also working with the Illuminati. As for television and movie appearances, the only appearance that I can think of is at the start of the Planet Hulk movie, in which they are shown being shaded out and explaining why the Hulk is being blasted into space. And that's the Illuminati, your favorite superheroes crossing those lines that can turn them into villains. Do you like this or hate this concept? And if you're curious about where you can find out more about them, well, the new Avengers comic series ever since the Marvel Now launch has been following their latest adventures. And I'm a huge fan of it. You should definitely be reading it if you haven't been. So since I'm a huge fan, you're going to be seeing the complete story for that story arc very soon. I'm Benny for Comic Story, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Google+, follow us on Twitter, and make sure you share and favorite the video. I'll see you guys next time, right here. All right, guys, I'm sitting here with Stefan Frank, the writer and creator of the indie book Silver. It's a book that continues the story of Bram Stoker's universe with uh, the vampires and such, and it'll be coming out November 12th. So if it's something you're interested in, just click the links down in the description down below and go to your local comic book shop and demand that they order Silver. So, Stefan, why don't you go ahead and let me know what your most rewarding project in your professional career was, in or out of comics, whatever works for you, just what you felt the most successful with, the most rewarding. I mean, I, I have to mention Aaron Giants, which I still have a poster in my office. But <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just, you know, it's it's a movie for a because it connected with people, you know, so profoundly, you know, and also because I get to work, you know, with Brad Bird, and uh, I'm a director now, and I, I feel like all my directing I, I learned from him. So that that wasn't you know, if I had like a dime for uh, uh, you know, every time somebody told me Giant is their favorite movie ever, then I, I could buy this, you know, whole city block, you know. But uh, uh, <laughs> it is a great movie. I watched it with my dad as a kid and I loved it. It's yeah. one of our all time favorites, so Exactly. See so so that's one. But then I have to also say Silver because i I think it's one of the projects that especially, you know, when you work in movies like I do, you know, uh, it's a very collaborative uh, uh, um, art. You work with a lot of people. You're working with, you know, a lot of money that belongs to other people and stuff. So, you know, your level of autonomy is somewhat, you know, uh, uh, narrow, you know, but with Silver, which is like really completely from my own fascinations, for ex I got to do exactly what I wanted to do with it, and seeing it connect with people, you know, I do a lot of conventions and, and, and you know, and just meeting people and seeing the reaction and, and the diversity of the audience who seems to connect with it, that's been the most rewarding experience for me. And I imagine it is, I, I know more of very many people who, I know quite a few people who think that Iron Giant is one of the best movies they've watched, they, they enjoy it, they still, it's still something that I have on my shelf right now. Yeah. So, so that, that's pretty amazing, guys. Um, and if you do, if you are interested in the Silver Book, is what he said is one of his most rewarding stuff. Uh, go ahead and click the links down below. It'll bring you right to the thing, and go to your uh, local comic book shop and request that they order Silver. And I'll see you guys next time right here at Comic Story.